Hi, kindergarteners, and welcome back to science. I hope that you enjoyed last week learning about snow. It just so happens that we had snow on the ground last week, so if you got to go outside and observe it, I'm sure that you noticed a lot of cool details in the snow. This week, the snow is really melting away. So before it's completely gone, before it becomes spring in a couple weeks, we are going to do one more lesson on snow and why snow is white. What I thought we would do first is go over the reading and the writing that I had you do last week. And if you didn't get a chance to do it, that's okay. Just make sure you're really following along, okay? So last week in our mystery science lesson with Doug, we had this mystery question, why is snow white? And you guys got to brainstorm some ideas why snow is white. You might have thought that snow is white because of the clouds. You might have thought snow is white because it comes from the sky. There are many, many reasons why kindergarteners might think that snow is white. What we learned is that when you see a snowflake really, 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 really closely, as close as you possibly can, it's actually mainly clear. It's just that snowflakes have bumps and edges, and when those bumps and edges pile up on top of each other, we see white more than we see clear. The second reason why snow is white is because of the sun. Even on cloudy days, the sun is still shining and the sun gives off a white light. So I had you complete the blanks on this worksheet to show me that you understand why snow is white. And I'm gonna type the answers in now. So snow has bumps and edges. When those bumps and edges pile up on top of each other, it makes the snow white. Snow is also white because of the sun. If you got those, great job. If you're just doing it now with me, please make sure that you glue this into your science journal when you're done. In today's lesson, we are going to continue to investigate all of the information we learned about why snow is white. And instead of writing and reading today, we are going to do our learning through an arts and craft. We're gonna use paper and it's going to act as snow. I specifically have wax paper. Um, and what I'll do is I'm going to model this activity and how this arts and craft activity can help us learn more about why snow is white. And then if you wanna do the activity on your own afterwards, you can, but just watch Ms. Millerick do it first, okay? All right, kindergartners. So to understand how snowflakes work and how the buildup of snow is white, we are going to make our own snowflakes. I sent this worksheet home to you guys a while back. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can just grab a regular piece of paper and draw your own snowflake on it. But remember, the best thing to do is to just watch me model this activity first, and then you can do it on your own. So here are some of the materials that I have. I have the paper, a plate, some liquid glue, and some wax paper. If you don't have wax paper, that's okay. You can use regular paper too, but the wax paper will work best. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out that box that says, look here. And when I'm done, I'm gonna place it down on this paper plate. Then I'm gonna take one piece of wax paper and place it on top of the snowman. And if I push down really good, you can see the snowman still. You could see the words that say, look here. What if we fold that wax paper up? You could still see it. I'm gonna fold it again. I could still kind of see it. What could we do to this wax paper so that we wouldn't be able to see that snowman anymore? Hmm. I'm gonna try crumpling it up and then I'll open it slowly and softly, place it back down on top of the snowman. Oh. It's a little blurry, I could still see, but not that good. Hmm. Let's try crumpling it up again, making even more creases in the wax paper. And now I'm gonna rip it up. 
you might be wondering, why am I ripping up the wax paper? Well, because now that the wax paper is crinkly and has bumps and edges, just like snowflakes, I'm going to make the wax paper into snow. Notice that the more little pieces of wax paper built up on top of that snowman, the less likely it is that you can see the snowman now. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my little pile of snow and I'm going to place it off to the side so that I can use this plate uh, to make my snowflake. So now I'm going to decide which snowflake design I want to use. You can use whichever one you want. I'm just going to use the simple one here. And once I have it cut out, I'll paste it back on top of my paper plate. This is kind of like my workspace so I don't make too much of a mess. And I'm going to grab a new piece of wax paper and press it on top. With the glue, you are going to trace the snowflake. So trace those bolded black lines. And you might need somebody to help you with this, someone to hold down the wax paper as you trace. But either way, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just go over that with the liquid glue. And then you'll get your pile of snowflakes and you'll place it all over the glue outline. Keep spreading it all over and then pat it down good when you're done. You'll need to put this in a safe spot for a few days and let it dry. And after a few days is up, after it has dried, you can gently peel it off of the wax paper and it should look something like this. This one that I made fell apart a little bit more. I think if I were to try this again, I would use a little bit more glue and I would rip my wax paper up smaller. But you'll see that even this craft snowflake has bumps and edges and that it's clear in some spots, but it's mainly white, just like real snowflakes. So when you're done, you can poke a hole in this, you can hang it on the window or in your fridge, um, wherever you want. Or maybe you're sick of the snow and you're ready to forget about it and you could throw it in the trash. Or you could glue it in your science journal. It doesn't matter. But this arts and craft is just super helpful in helping us understand how snowflakes have those bumps and those edges, how they're not perfectly flat, right? And that's why we see the color white. So I hope that you enjoyed making your snowflake and that you enjoyed learning about how snow is white and why it's not any other color. And next week, we will start to learn about things that don't make us think about the cold in the wintertime. All right, boys and girls, see you later.